Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Cowboy Leather and Shoe Repair. Today we're doing a little bit of uh, clicker die work, custom clicker die work. I've got a uh, customer that he's got clicker dies, or a clicker die, two of them actually, uh, for small kids' wooden uh, pistol and knife. He's got the dies, he's got the leather, but he does not have a clicker press. So, he brings the, uh, he brings me the leather, and I click them out, and I stitch them up. So let's, uh, click out a few, have some fun. Let me get a few of these cut out and uh, I'll show you what we do when it comes time to assemble. Already clicked out and assembled 150 of these. So we're gonna make these off and we'll show you what we do. I'm gonna put you down, set you up here a little bit so you can see what we're doing. Hold on. Okay, we're gonna stitch these up on the uh, Juki. 8700 nothing spectacular using 69 uh, weight thread top and bottom I know the machine hasn't got any name tags on it but it's a Juki so flip the camera around and 
will make up soap for you. These are pretty simple. Fold. Slide it under there. Make a few stitch back up. Now come at it. Easy peasy. That's the way they look. Now we'll do the same thing with the knife sheath. You know, it's not a bad gig doing this. Knife you know. sheath. One set. Let me do another one. Like I said in the beginning, guy's got, uh, he's got the leather, he's got the clicker die, but he doesn't have a clicker press. What he does is he takes, I make them, he, make, he makes the, uh, the little wooden pistols and the uh, knives and he takes them to uh, different shows he's got a uh, dry goods store excuse me dry goods store here in Tennessee and he goes travels around to a lot of these uh, Civil War reenactments mountain men rendezvous uh, cowboy action shooting and different place like that he sells uh, Curry correct vintage 17 and 1800s uh, like I say curry uh, clothing if you need boots hats shirts anything that had to do with the 1800s cowboy civil war or period dress of that period he pretty much has got it he's leaving uh, he said he told me uh, Next week, Thursday, he's heading out to uh, Fort Bridger. Fort Bridger to a rendezvous. Going to be out there for a month. He's going to hit a few uh, shows hit between here and there. And then come back, reload, restock, and back on the road again. Let me hit this one. Now this 8700, it handles it. This is uh, just a touch bit thicker than uh, upholstery leather. And as you see, this Juki goes through it. So, you know, I wouldn't be afraid. I've sewed a little bit thicker uh, on here and don't have a bit of problem with it. Now I do have a bigger machine. I've got the cylinder bed, we'll show you here in a minute. And you know that 
it's a harness stasher, so it'll go through just about anything. But I like doing this uh, small stuff on the uh, little jukey here. It's a pleasure to run. Got no complaints. All right, that's I'll, I'll finish these off here in a little bit. Oh, that hurt. Now, I've got this. Uh, that's the bigger machine. That's the workhorse. Now, that is a Ferdinand the Bull. They don't make them anymore. They make a machine called the Ferdinand. But if you look at that machine and look at the Sellrite and some of the other machines that are out on the market, they look a whole lot like that one. This machine is, uh, I think it was manufactured right around 1970. Maybe end of 69, but 70. And that, like I say, is a harness stitcher. So, that'll do the, that'll jib. I can, you know, do it on there. But, like I say, I like to use that Juki. Works a whole lot better. Now, like last Friday, we, I showed you what we had on the table, what we were working on. I finished these off, put the holes and laced them up. They're ready to go up for sale. And still haven't done nothing with that, with this bag. Haven't done, haven't done anything with that. I just been concentrating on getting that order for that gentleman out. Like I say, he's uh, leaving next week Thursday. But I have uh, built something else. That is a cartridge belt. This one is for a 4570. Uh, caliber rifle we've got into making those I ran across some uh, cotton nylon it's excuse me it's cotton uh, belting and we're making uh, those we'll make them any length people want any caliber you want just all I gotta do is call us let us know what you want and how many you want and we'll make them up now, i got a lot of things coming, on, coming up on my plate here in the next couple weeks. I'm not going to go into great detail, but it's going to be a, uh, I'll say, life-changing life for me. No, I'm not going to die. But anyway, uh, really getting back to what I was saying. If you have a chance, let me sit down here. If you ever have a chance to uh, do any custom work, if you've got a clicker die or a clicker press, and you run across anybody that wants that's got the, the makings, they want something made. You cut it out for them. You stitch it up or do whatever. I think I jump on it. It's, you can make some money. Now with these, I make a little bit of money, but I take it out and trade with the guy. He has, like I say, he has a uh, dry goods store, has uh, period correct clothes for the 1800s. And I, I'll swap off, you know, some work, take half in money and half in uh, product. But, you know, if you get a chance to do it, I mean, even if you want to advertise that you do it. Or if you've got a clicker die and are you, you're able to click out uh, mass quantities of something, you can always uh, click them out and sell them as uh, like stirrup leather or stirrup 
or uh, yeah, spur straps. Click them out. Put the uh, either sell them with with the buckle or without a buckle. Sell them as stirrup blanks or uh, spur spur strap blanks. Let somebody else you know tool them or do whatever they want to do to them. You can make money there. There's always a way to make money. You just have to stop and think about it. I mean, there's, I'm not going to mention name, but there's one YouTuber that he draws up a design of a bag or pouch or a wallet or a card holder. He's got the computer program. He draws it up and he sends it to uh, over here to the East Coast. They click it put it together and they sell them right from there is it a good idea I don't know do I do it no I think you know if I say I make something I make it I don't I mean it's not like I design it and have somebody else make it I make all my own stuff and a lot of leather crafters do the same thing they make their own stuff. They show you what they're doing. They they make them, they've got the clicker dies or they've got the patterns right there in their shop and they cut them out. But, you know, I don't know, I just, maybe I'm old fashioned. I just can't justify selling something that I didn't make, put my hands on. But that's another story. All right, well, I just wanted to show you what we were doing and throw a few ideas out there on different ways to make some money. Uh, you know, whether you're making it or you're cutting it out or doing piece work for somebody else, it's all good. It's all money. So, with that said, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to finish uh, the, doing them holsters up so I can get, get them to the man. And... So he can get out there and get on the road. He's packing up his trailer today. I talked to him earlier this morning. And he's gathering up his stuff, restocking. So, all right. Hope everybody has a good weekend. Stay cool, stay safe. And we'll see you the next go-around. Cowboy out. Bye now.